Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're here for the first time. I am a journaler, journal maker, and teacher of journaling courses, and I'm so excited for day one of the Inspiration Journal course. It is a collage art journaling course, and the first prompt or theme for the collage we are doing for our very first page spread is neutral. So grab out all your neutral book pages and uh, vintage papers and have fun doing your collage on your first page spread. I have got my scrap box here next to me and my book that I'm using as my journal. It is a Yellow Pages phone book, which is free in Australia. And so I'm doing an altered journal, uh, altered book for my inspiration journal. So that way I can feel free to cover every page with my own pieces that are meaningful to me. And so here are a few books that I've pulled out that I look for at op shops. Uh, this one is a poetry book. I've also got a school grammar type book or a school reader. Um, I've got a couple other poetry books too. One is a children's book one with some illustrations in it. And I also pulled out a contents page from a book. And I later on also use a page from The Secret Garden, which is one of my um, books from my childhood that is significant, um, especially the movie. I just remember uh, loving the idea of this wonderful, magical, <laughs> beautiful secret garden with a key that gets you in uh, to open the gate. And I wanted my own secret garden in real life. So the idea being try and choose pages and pieces for your collage that are meaningful to you. Um, of course, you can do completely random if that's what you would like to do. But the idea is that these journals, these are creative biographies where each image and word that we put onto our pages, they tell a story. They tell parts of our story and share pieces of who we are. And so I am a writer and I have studied a Master of Writing and Literature. I've also done some studies in creative writing and with that, you know, we have studied poetry, fiction writing, non-fiction, um, and I just grab all these books to kind of represent that as well. So I love vintage um, and I love thrifting these books, but in general, I also just am a book reader and a writer. So words and book pages have, you know, a lot of significance to me, a lot of meaning. And not only these types of books are meaningful to me, but what I'm also doing is looking for specific words or phrases on the pages. So you can see this piece here has the word animals written in red writing, I believe, or I think it's like a dark orange. And yeah, I've always been, always been an animal lover. When I was a kid, my dream job was to be a zoologist or a zookeeper. So much so that when I went to uni, I majored in zoology and did honors in animal behavior. And I was determined that my very first job would be something to do with working with animals. It wasn't in a zoo, but I did work in a pet shop. So I sort of fulfilled that dream of working with animals. I, I realized later on that that wasn't actually my dream anymore to be a zoologist, but still an animal lover and love pets and dogs and cats, especially, <laughs> especially with my black cat Keanu now. Um, so yeah, that word is significant to me. You can see that little heading that says contents and I wanted to put that on my first page because it's like the contents page of my journal, which I love. Um, so later on, I add a bit of note paper to that underneath where it says contents so I can write kind of my own little contents or my own journaling about introducing this book, which brings me to our journaling prompt for today, which is introduction. So for all my journals, really, I like to do an introduction page or have some sort of tag or journal card where I write the details of the journal. So it's just a nice, easy way for me to break in a journal. And I know lots of us can be intimidated, you know, when starting a new journal, we think it's, oh, it's too pretty and it's too nice for us to use. And we don't want to put our writing in there because we don't want to ruin it. 
Um, and so something that I like to do to kind of ease into the journal and break it in is do an introduction page where I just write the name of the journal, some details about it, maybe where I got it from or why I chose it and how I'm going to use it. So I encourage you for your very first page, but if you're one of the people who wants to add journaling to your page, because you could just let it be a collage art journal if you want, um, but if you want to add some actual writing, go ahead and start by writing the details of the journal to do an introduction page. And if you want to see my journaling part of it, you can check that out over on my Patreon. So how this is going to work, um, I shared all this information in the introduction video. So if you missed that and you're new to um, this whole project, uh, go search back um, on Monday. I put out a video with the introduction with all of the information about this course. But basically, I show a flip through of my completed collage art journal. And in this free course on my channel, I am showing you page by page my process of how I made my collage journal so that you can follow, follow along at home. Um, but they are, my intention for my collage pages was not that it's just fun to do in itself and tells a story just with the pieces themselves, but that it would be a background and prepared pages for me to then be able to write on and use my handwriting to tell my stories and share those pieces of myself. So yeah, the free course is the collage part. If you would like extra videos um, when this video ends, you can click the link in the description box to my Patreon and the Sapphire tier is the video tier uh, where you get access to all my extra videos and every single day for the next 30 days with this collage um, inspiration journal course, you'll be able to see my journaling uh, videos over there on Patreon. Um, and I just wanted to talk a bit more about how we can choose meaningful pages and words uh, for us. So uh, down, I'm not sure if you can see it, but near the bottom, there's a word that says Matilda. And so my niece is called Matilda. So that's kind of significant to me. And again, with the collage, like I just laid down two large pages to start off with because that helps me to break in the page and not feel like I have to have all these tiny little pieces and I have to fill the page up with them somehow. If I have a backdrop of these larger pages, then I can feel like, all right, I just need to fill in the gaps and then just add some smaller pieces here and there to complete my collage. Um, and yeah, I'll share little tips and tricks like that throughout this course as well as they come up. My mind is going everywhere. I've got so many things I want to share. So um, I hope this is all uh, useful and helpful, encouraging you to work in your own collage journals and inspires you to find pieces that are meaningful to you to put on the page. So um, later on, you'll see me add uh, papers to the left-hand side page. Just a little note about that. At first, I was thinking I might only use the right-hand side of the pages because I wasn't sure if I maybe wanted to do just writing on the left-hand side or there's something completely different. I had no idea. But later on, I, I work out that, no, I want to do a double page spread. But you can do a single page spread if that's going to be um, more manageable for you. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do a full double page spread for each of my um, pages. And so that's how it's going to be for the themes and the prompts, the daily prompts when I run this course. So on the left hand side page, you'll, you'll see the second part of this video soon <laughs> when it crosses over to that um, journaling session. I just merged the two videos into one long video, um, but you'll see I added a page from a this book here, Mechanical World Yearbook, which I actually got from my brother-in-law. And so, um, I found that really to be super meaningful, like a gift from him. And so when I'm using these ne neutral pages, um, I use a bit of that page as well to represent that. And again, that just tells a bit of my story. Um, and then I've got these uh, vintage music papers. And I actually think that these make the collage. Like it already looks okay, but once I add the little snippets of music paper, I think it just pulls everything together and gives the page a bit more interest than it needed. See, look, just having that there, I think heightens the collage a little bit. So that's a little tip for you too. Um, if you want to combine 
some book pages with uh, vintage music paper. Um, that's the only two types of things I use for my neutral page, but of course you can use coffee dye paper, you can use vintage ledger paper or anything with that neutral colour tone to it. And I think it's so effective um, just having these neutral colour tones on the page. And I specifically also chose different uh, books with fonts, different sizes of writing and different typeface, that type of thing, um, different layout on the page. Um, so that's really fun. I like how the contents page is kind of uh, justified to the left and right. Um, whereas the poetry page in the top left corner is left justified. Um, so yeah, it's really fun just putting it together. What I also want to mention is, uh, you know, we're just breaking in our journal and don't get too precious with this whole journaling project and especially don't get too precious with your first page. If you're new to journaling, if you're new to collage especially, the idea with this is just to have fun. So it doesn't need to be this amazing work of art. It doesn't need to be, you know, this polished, beautiful, spectacular, well put together page. Okay. So just rip pieces up, you know, have fun and just slap those things down wherever you want. The idea being if you're using meaningful pages to you, even if it doesn't even connect with you in necessarily with a story, if it's just something that you like, like I like vintage and I like books. So therefore, even if I didn't find meaningful words, it still shares something about me. The fact that I like vintage and books. So it doesn't really matter how you get it on the page, just get it on the page and it will stand alone there on that page telling your story just as it is. So I want to encourage you, just get in there. Just just rip up those pieces of paper and just get your glue and just put it on the page. And the great thing is you can cover it over if you don't like it. You can just keep adding more and more layers um, if you really don't like anything. But, you know, you can see my page isn't this amazing work of art. But I'm happy with it. It has little pieces that I like and that fills in the gaps. And yeah, I am just rummaging through my scrap box looking for any other pieces that I might want to add. Um, and then I think I'm going to transition soon to go over to the left hand side page. Um, oh, I should also mention that there is a freebie for day one. So throughout this course, there are some freebies that you can download and print. So the freebie for day, for day one is uh, the vintage music paper. So I, you could see in my scrap box, I had quite a few strips of the music paper. And so I scanned a few of those or a bunch of those and uh, you can use those if you want in your own collage and just rip them up and uh, pop them onto your collage or whatever cre creative project that you have. Um, that, that freebie and all the freebies will be available over on my Patreon as well for public access. Also, it's available on Buy Me A Coffee. Now this piece here, this is a lovely colored uh, note paper. So beautiful. Love, 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 <laughs> getting tongue tied. Love, 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 love this color. I'm just cutting it down so I can fit it into that little spot where um, it covers uh, the contents. I wanted a bit of the writing to show. Um, and then that's where my journaling space is going to be. Now you don't have to worry about adding blank pieces of note paper or ledger if or journaling cards and tags and sticking those up on top if you're just wanting to create a collage journal. But if you want to add your writing and you're wondering, well, where on earth do I put my writing? So what I do is just grab, you know, a blank piece of paper um, or lined paper, ledger paper, whatever it is, and then I will stick that on top of my collage so that I can write on it. So... You could, if you want, just write directly on top of your collage. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I like having designated separated spaces where I can kind of section off my page and yeah, really allocate some journaling space because at heart, I am a journaler. I love this collage art journaling um, as a creative outlet and as a form of self-expression. But for me, um, I do want my words on the page. I do want to actually write something on the page as well. So every single page in my collage journal will have writing on it. Um, 
and you could just like do a little sentence you could write a quote you could write a, a sentiment or um, a scripture or uh, you know just something short something you're grateful for maybe again if you're new to journaling and the idea of writing a whole chunk of writing on your page is a bit daunting to you just start with you know something you're grateful for that day or um, write about um, a quote that you love or a song lyric or something like that um, but I just want to share kind of my process and idea of how I use collage pieces to be general prompts in themselves actually I should mention that uh, note paper is available in the 30 page pdf um, document that I created specifically for this course so if you would like more printables that is available in my Etsy or for my Ruby patrons um, and there's over 150 pieces a lot of them that I scanned that I used for my my own collage journal and so that piece there the writing space with the lined note paper that is part of that collage kit um, so yeah what was I say how you can use your journal what you stick on the pages to be journaling prompts themselves so i have got a list of collage prompts and journaling prompts that you can use if you're one of those people who just need some structure and some inspiration but what i want to encourage you to do is and what i do with all my journal courses is i'm trying to teach you as journalists to re um understand that you are your own wellspring if that's a word is that a word <laughs> of inspiration and stories and memories and moments that you can document and i'm just going to try to guide you to access those through these courses so let me give an example for example looking at my page here i've already shared how animals was a word that stood out to me so that prompts me to maybe do a page about how um, as a kid i was an animal lover whenever i was at someone's house people would be like where is she where's she gone and they would always say, oh, she's with the dog. <laughs> she's patting the dog. She's um, playing with the dog because I'll always be with the animal. And I might write about how my dream as an eight-year-old kid was to be a zoologist. And I might write about how my very first job was in a pet shop and I used to groom dogs. And I, my favorite animal used to be the dog. It's now a dingo, <laughs> but I love dogs as well. Um, and so that whole one word from one book page can inspire this whole journaling session or writing about what animals mean in my life and that kind of thing. Um, the, the page about the secret garden, I could write about, you know, the time I went to the movies with my mum to watch that movie and how it just sparked something in my imagination and how I wanted to create my own secret garden ever since watching that and how florals and flowers have been a significant thing in my life and um, then that might spark a memory about how I would go to the nursery with my mum and we would buy flowers together and then we'd go home and plant them in the garden and how she would teach me the names of flowers and then that might prompt a memory of how on our way to the nursery we would stop at the bakery and get some yo-yos um, and then maybe that would prompt, remember that time that I went around the neighborhood walking and we went and stopped at the playground and then, you know, like, <laughs> I hope this kind of is showing an example of the things that you choose to put on your pages. Obviously there's something about it that draws you to it. It's resonating with you somehow in even just the my, most minute little detailed way, but it sparks a memory for you. It sparks a story, it sparks some sort of connection and then obviously humans are so great at making associations and stream of consciousness and then it just you know you can go down this rabbit <laughs> rabbit hole of this story leads to this story and it reminds you of this picture it reminds you of that um memory reminds you of that photo and oh wait what was that recipe for those yo-yos and oh remember those cooking sessions i had with my sister and remember those brandy snacks that i loved when she had her 21st birthday party and i wrote down the recipe for those brandy snacks and oh where did i put that recipe it's in one of my folders in my filing cabinet might get that out photocopy it put it on the page <laughs> and then journal about um her 21st birthday party and how that was one of the best nights of my life because it was on new year's eve for the millennium and she had a masquerade party and it was just an amazing memory back when i was a teenager um and you know like <laughs> that really was such a special memory to me and it's all been been brought back just by 
a book page about the secret garden and you know just tracing it through like that so I want to encourage you to look at your own life and your own pieces that you collect that somehow speak to you like explore them reflect on them and chase them see what memories they are sparking in you and what stories need to be told or want to be told from that um, and then you, you, you're off and running from there on um, and you will always have this well of inspiration to draw from from your own life but it's sparked from these pieces that you collect from your life or that you just see you know as I'm looking through book pages I'll be like ripping things out cutting things out because I will just be reminded of something from that book page you know today I did a live and as I was using a book as a glue book just to have as a background so that the glue wouldn't get on my desk you know something as random as that I found a page that said Dracaena and that sparked a memory of how my nickname when I was a kid was Dracaena and so I pulled those pages out and put them aside knowing that I want to use that as a backdrop I'll glue that on a page and I will collage over the top of it maybe add some journaling space somehow and then write about my nickname and Dracaena and how that meant a lot to me and how I'll always have a connection to that plant. <laughs> so random, but to me, it means a lot. And so just uh, look out for these things as you're looking through books, as you're at op shops or thrift shops, as you're looking at fabric, as you're looking at photos, you know, you, fabric laces, papers, cards, envelopes, who knows what it is that will speak to you and what will prompt a memory. But that's what I do. That's when I see something that sparks something, I put it aside in a box or a drawer or a tray. And I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do with it or when I'm going to do something with it. But I know I want to do something with it because it speaks to me. And it reminds me of something that means something in my life. So yeah, I, I just, I guess I'm encouraging you to um, pay attention and look for these things because these are what you can journal about and when you're um, lacking in inspiration you can go to that box where you've pulled out book pages where you've cut out photos where you've put recipes where you have placed scraps that mean something to you where you have put I don't know wrapping paper from a birthday party you went to or a business card from a restaurant that you had this really wonderful meal from or you know photos of your pets. I don't know. There's just so much you can use in your journal. Um, where I really do believe that quote for this course, our journals are creative biographies where each image and word shares our stories and shares a piece of who we are. So I hope that this first page has kind of captured that for you and shown how that can inspire you and how that can prompt your own journaling that you don't need to rely on someone else's journaling prompts. You can get that from your own life and from the things that speak to you. So maybe look with new eyes at the things that you've collected. Maybe look with new eyes at the things around you and gather your things. I'm always gathering. I'm always collecting things that speak to me. And I always have since I've been a kid, you know. I used to get in trouble as a kid all the time because I would cut out pictures from books. <laughs> I couldn't help it because they spoke to me and I would have folders like plastic sleeve folders where I would just put all my little treasures I found of animals that I cut out or pretty like I used to get jewelry brochures and cut out the rings that I loved and cut out the necklaces that I liked I would get magazines and cut out pictures of I don't know dresses that I liked and shoes that I liked whatever it was I used to do that all the time as a kid um, and I wish I kept some of those things because I would literally keep folders and folders of just pretty things I had cut out or things that um, resonated with me and I had fun just looking through those folders um, when I moved house the first time I got rid of most of that stuff because I just didn't do anything with it I didn't I hadn't discovered junk journals at that point but now that I have discovered junk journals I would have kept all of that stuff because man, I would have decorated pages with all that stuff. That's prime material. That's good material to use for your collaging, for your journaling. And honestly, you could use any journal. It doesn't have to be a collage art journal. Any journal, a daily journal, a yearly journal, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a junk journal. Just your normal writing journal. And that's what I used to do when I was a kid. 
and actually when I was an adult, <laughs> I would have writing journals, but every now and then I would stick in just a picture that I liked or a photo or a business card or something, some paper that I liked, and I would just stick it on the page. Now that I've discovered junk journals, I stick everything on the page. Like I'm now getting to the point where my whole page is just covered in stuff that I've collected, right? <laughs> um, so that's just renewed or... Uh, um, made my love of collecting things that are meaningful to me just explode basically to the point where yeah I really want to continue this um, project of collaging my own pages where the whole entire page is made of things that mean something to me and then I can write over the top of that whereas I came from the background of just writing on, on my pages and then occasionally I might stick something on there um, I've gone the whole opposite way <laughs> Um, but yeah, whatever method works for you, I mean, this is just um, a project that really helped me at a time when I needed it, when I needed some inspiration in my life and I needed this creative outlet and a form of self-expression. This is just the way that it came out on the page through collage and art journaling and just give it a go. It might not be your thing and that's okay. Just give it a go. I love this thing in the book Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Really good book. Really recommend it. I got a lot out of it. Um, one thing that struck me from reading that book was where he was talking about how we find out who we are by finding out who we're not. And so I totally agree with that. And I agree with that in terms of creativity as well. So we find out who we are and what we like through finding out what we don't like, for example. So you might not like collage, and that's totally okay. It doesn't mean it was a worthless endeavor because that gets you closer to finding out what you do like. Uh, I'm getting towards the end of this page, so if you would like to see the journaling portion, the journaling video, um, you can click the link in the description box to my Patreon. And if you just can't get enough of these videos, <laughs> my chatty, <laughs> my ch there's, there's gonna be a lot of chatty um, videos in this course because I've just got so much to share so many stories and I hope that it's helpful for you um, but you can check that out otherwise I'll see you tomorrow for day two happy journaling bye guys a big thank you to my beautiful patrons who supported me in April thank you so much for allowing me to do this for another month it really means the absolute world to me and I could not do this without you if you would like to become a patron in May I will leave the link below to my patreon down in the description box that's where you get access to more videos from me, personal updates, printables. And if you're a Ruby patron or higher, you get every single digital kit from my Etsy with a new, with a new kit each month. If you would like to support my channel through a one-off donation, you can do that through PayPal to my email address or through Buy Me A Coffee. And if you'd like to be part of any of my journaling courses, I'm starting them again in May for the month of May. So feel free to email me to register and I hope you have fun journaling your life because your stories matter.